There's two possibilities. I know, no. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. You said, where do the things that you do come from? Is that the question you asked? That's exactly the question you asked. Which means you say, I am here, and I'm doing things, and I want to know where do the things which I do come from. Okay. Is that absurd or not? After you say that you are there, and you do the things, so you know they come from you. So don't ask me now, how do you know that you are there? What I, what's the function? Okay. That's not saying a car drives. Where, how does the car drive? It comes from the car. The car drives. How does the car drive? The car drives. You're not, you're, not, you're not saying anything. You're not getting into specific detail of how I come from standing still to... How the car drives is a technical question, not, that, a, not an existential think, question. Don't you think that's also a technical question, how somebody comes from doing some, from being in a certain state and moving into a different state with the possibility of having moved into, a, into not that state. Because you chose to do that. State. Because you chose to do that. So you're saying, why did you choose you, that? There's two why, why you chose to do that? Why you chose to do that? That's a different question. That you have to answer yourself because oh. of upbringing, because oh, of so training, oh. because of wanting certain results. So there are reasons for everything I do. I don't of course there are reasons. To of course there are reasons. So I don't actually choose. <laughs> of course there are good reasons or bad reasons. And you took that reason to be you took that reason to be more important for you than to do that. Why reason. did I take that reason to be more important? That's different. If you go, if you go, and keep regressing. You if you want to regress, basically, you want to know why. Because you're looking for self gratification. Simple as okay, that. Okay, so why did I pick that self gratification and not the other? Because you thought that gives you more self gratification. So that means I didn't actually chose. I just followed. Of course you did. Of I course you did. Follow. I just because, shh, one because, because, outcome, because there's only one thing that's greater I'll, I'll give it one more thing. Because who says you have to have self gratification? There are people who deny themselves self gratification. So that you is self-gratification in a sense. No, that's that's not what gratifies them. Denying them what the, the general consensus of the term self-gratification okay. we can go on. Next question. Right. This one, this one's a little bit more. Can I ask, if, if my choices are to believe in God, and they sell that have been in existence forever, why can I not come to the conclusion that there was a cell similar to the one that a human is born from that was in existence forever and that had in it the ability to grow into what the world is today. What do you mean by cell? If you mean by cell what science means by a cell, then obviously the question is an absurd question. Because that cell has only the ingredients that it has. The cell cannot evolve into something which is not part of its existence. So therefore, if that cell is going to evolve into uh, things which it has already within itself, then you're simply calling X a cell, while somebody else calls X God. If you mean by cell literally the physical cell like the body cells, then the question is absurd, because of whatever it says there is impossible. The cell cannot de develop and evolve into anything more than what the cell is itself. Why? How does it within boundaries? Huh? It's within boundaries. It's within, within complete thing. And whatever would even develop in that would be simply a reflection of that cell. And no more than that cell. So therefore it can never evolve into something which goes beyond it. You would, then all people would have to be identical. It's like a, it's, 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 it's like a cell splitting up and you get identical twins. Or now we have the identical triplets, etc. So therefore it's, uh, everything would be identical. The reality is that things are not identical. So therefore there's this big divergence between all the different components in the world. So therefore, obviously, it is not from one singular body cell the way we use that term. Unless you mean by cell something altogether different. So, uh, some, some kind of a potential clay uh, cell, atom, molecule, whatever you want to call it, which has the full potential, of universal potential, of literally anything uh, uh, possible that is contained therein, and then, uh, <coughs> which obviously can then not be simply a physical cell, because physical cell cannot uh, evolve into more than it has in itself. Then how is a human created? Hmm? Then how is a human created? By God. It starts. Does he how? how, how, how because everything is contained. Like we, today we talk about the DNA. Today we talk about all these, these, uh, these sub-components there. So why couldn't the DNA of the world have been in existence forever? 
They said the ingredients were there. You said last time, right? right? Oh. There had to be God the whole time, or there was. You can argue that there should have been matter that existed forever. You have to argue that something existed forever. Why can't okay. the DNA of the world exist forever? Because then the, the world would have to be uh, become about much earlier. Then you cannot. There is no time. But this time, there is no scientist who would argue that the world is more than four billion years old. Fifteen billion. I just read Even it fifteen billion. If all I care, a, a, a zillion billion. <laughs> Whatever number you're going to give me, yeah. it is a number which has a beginning. Okay. If, if this matter would be eternal, then there is no beginning. Then everything should have been existed, uh, should, should have existed already way before that. The, in DNA. I'm talking not just the DNA, everything, the full development. Because whatever time is required for this, whatever time is required for this process of evolution, of development, has already happened zillions or zillions of years ago. If you talk about an infinity of time, there is no limit that it should have happened literally to eternity. Then if we talk about a certain beginning in time, that makes no sense whatsoever. Unless, unless it is by choice that I withhold and I start with a certain point in time. But matter doesn't have a, a choice. Matter does not have a will. Matter does not have a, a consciousness to decide now yes, now no. Matter does not have intelligence to make decisions. Matter is simply something in the evolutionary process which just happens by a whole process of a whole series of accidents by fluke. So you say there has to be a brain in the world? Huh? Yes. Yes. Can you and brain is of course no longer a matter of matter. Sure, the brain is matter. But the intelligence is not the matter. Because the brain, the matter, you put in the ground, it doesn't have intelligence anymore. Can there be matter without time? Huh? Is it possible that there could be matter without time? Like he said, yes. there's no time. Yes. 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 Um, See, uh, theoretically, it's possible. Yes. Theoretically, yes. Time, time, time is a relative concept. But it's only there's no such thing as time. There's no such, there's no such thing as time. Time exists only in our perception. Not just because it's physical. Because time is relative to experience. Time is relative to change. Everything is, time is relative to change. If there's no change, there's no time. There's nothing there to experience the time. There is no time. It's like a trick. There's no way to experience the evolutionary process of 4 billion or 3 billion years. And yet we talk about the process of 50 billion years. Okay? Now, if you talk about the process of 50 billion years, why do you have Whatever time is required for the process of development from 50 billion years ago to what we have today, that time has already happened zillions of times over before. Nobody says that. Nobody argues that. You can see the changes in it, so obviously it has not been eternal existence. Why does it We see the changes that, that develop, so therefore nobody ever argued that world matter will argue could have existed eternally. But nobody will argue the world or the, or, the, or the whole solar system or for that matter the whole uh, all the constellations are that they are eternal. Nobody argues that. How can you say James believe that? James believes that the world that the universe always exists. Who? James. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's like an Eastern religion there. You're talking about science now, not uh, technology. Yeah. Wait, wait. Yes? How can you say anything that everything is within our perception? What? How can you say anything that everything is within our perception? I apologize for this. Everything is what? You're talking about duality. Everything is the way we see it. And even the way we what? See it. The way what? The way who sees it? Who? You. Oh, so something is existing. <laughs> How does intelligent design mean God? Why can't it just be the dark aliens who you don't, you don't know where they are, but they came and they walked And where did they come from? I don't know. So why does that have to be God? Does, does it need to be an origin? Well, or does it have to be God? Is it, if you have more than one, if you have more than one source of origin, then uh, th 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 there is no uniformity. Then there, is the, then there has to be because there where the one is, the, each one is a separate entity. Where the one is, the other one is not. 
which means neither of them are all powerful, neither of them can be eternal, neither of them can be anything of all these definitions that would go into that. Okay. So God is not so, one so, either. So, so, so therefore, in terms of source of origin, going back to a first cause, to a prime mover, would not exist. I don't know. So, so, so therefore, the aliens are simply begging the question: Where do the aliens come from? Ah, so, then why bring it up in the first place? Then why, then why bring it up in the first place? Because chariot of the gods. It comes from there, but that's it. What? Chariot of the gods. All right. Um, here, somebody just sent in a question. He wants to know: Is it? How do we know that God is still controlling the world? Is it possible for us? No, no. We're speaking about the genesis and the origins of things, but today and right now, can we still... If you go back to the origin and genesis of things, it's a question of going into definition. If it's a question of going into definition for this first cause, this prime mover, etc., etc., uh, to be, then this means, by definition, he is unchangeable. Because anything that changes cannot be eternal because it's no longer that which it was, and no longer that which it is, etc., etc. So therefore, uh, if you're talking about something like that, that is the, the, the prime mover, the first cause, that brought everything into being, so therefore that has not lost, cannot lose possibly its stature, otherwise it would never have been that which it was in the first place. So it's a question of defining what do you mean by God. See, the problem here in as many of these issues is that once you bring in the word God, you immediately get confused by the religious concept of God. You can look at the word God simply as a concept. What kind? Non, non-religious concept. What? Call, call it X. Leave out the word God, G-O-D. Call it X. In so far that you go back to Prime Mover, please think that the first cause, call it X. Leave out all religious aspects. Now, in order for this to be the first cause, we can logically, not religiously, leave religion out of it. Simply logically, in order to be first cause, it has to be this, it has to be that, it has to be that. There may be various philosophers, not uh, even Jewish philosophers, not even religious philosophers, etc., etc., uh, go into these definitions, which we won't have time to go into detail tonight. Uh, it has to be this, this eternity, this uh, incorporeality, uh, this, uh, the, the unity for that matter of it, that there cannot be more than one, etc., etc. Now, if it has these characteristics, these components, it must be intelligent, it must be a, uh, something that is alive, because otherwise it cannot bring about life forms, etc., etc. So once Does it, it go- be infinite? Huh? It would have to be infinite, because if it's not infinite, it's limited by space or time, or both. So therefore it cannot be, therefore it cannot be eternal. Uh, if it's not eternal, then you get to the question, what was before it? How did it come about? So you're simply begging the question, so that is not the first cause, that could be the second cause, the third cause, the fourth cause, so where did that come from? That must have had another cause. So the other cause is the first cause. So that's simply begging the question, uh, so we are going back to the very root, whatever would be, had to be the first cause. And once you get to that, it is that which it is. If it is that which it is, it is not something that would change. Change does not go with eternity. Change does not go with uh, incorporeality. Uh, change does not go with infinity. Uh, so therefore, uh, it would still be exactly that which it was, right, originally, if there is no such no, you can't even say the word originally, but that which it is, that which it was, that which it is, and that which it will be. So therefore, there cannot be any change there. Okay. All right. And uh, one more came in. Is there, is there, what argument, if any, do you admire most from the agnostic who argues, who argues God who cares about us doesn't exist? The agnostic is simply sitting on the fence. It's a nice cop-out. The agnostic thinks that he is uh, respectable in so far that he doesn't attack anybody. says, look here, I'm not saying God does exist. I'm not offending the atheist. I'm not saying God does not exist, which which means I'm not uh, uh, offending the theist. Um, I simply don't know and uh, therefore leave me uh, me alone and uh, respect my being... um, an agnostic. However, my problem with the agnostic is that he is being inconsistent. Uh, simply saying, I do not know, uh, you can use the same argument, you don't know, frankly, anything in life. There isn't a single thing in life that you can prove beyond the shadow of a doubt. It does not exist. And yet, when it comes to practical decisions, then you use certain criteria, as you said before, with electricity and other things, because I experienced the effects. So therefore I draw a conclusion, there has to be causality, there must be a cause for this, and I call this this. 
Uh, do I know the full definition? Do I know the full explanation? No, I don't. But I just know there must be this thing which is responsible for these effects.